Hello everyone, in the previous module we were discussing about the hot wire anemometer. Now that we have seen how the circuit looks, how can you simulate that using multi-sim, let us see how we can rig up the circuit. So as I mentioned the bridge connection is like this, like we have the, the heater here, the PT100, if that becomes your the portion where the sensor where you want to integrate the uh, this with the anemometer, so your sensor would come here. This is a series resistor 150 ohm series resistor and R7 would be your temperature compensation resistor and then in series is your 1 kilo ohm resistor. All of this the output of these two will be given to your comparator here and then given to your transistor in case you do not have an op amp which can drive high currents. Now that we have seen this circuit, let us see how do we rig up the entire circuit. For that I would like to show you the pin functions of the IC what we are using. So we have an OPA548 here, so it, it can support high currents. So this is the pinout here. And the explanation for each of this, the, the functions of each pin here, like the non inverting input, the inverting input, current limit set. So, what if you uh, clearly read through the data sheet of OPA 548, you would understand that this pin here, the third pin, the current limiting pin here could be connected to the V minus in case you are ok to run it at the, the current what the op amp can support. But if you are working with devices where you require very small currents and you want to reduce the you, you need to limit the amount of current that flows through your device then accordingly you can connect the I limit through a resistor and build your circuit. For now we are ok with the spec what the op amp can drive through and hence we have just connected the I limit to V minus here and it would become more clear once you read through the entire data sheet how each pin could be connected and the positive power supply output and the enable pin. So we will see how to get the hot wire anemometer circuit using the OPA 548 today. So initially this is the circuit what the, the board you see here, so there are uh, uh, so the two resistors here are 100 ohm, this is 100 ohm and the two connected in parallel 50 ohm, so this net R value 150 ohm is connected in series with the tiny PT100 what you see here, the blue small chip here is nothing but your PT100 sensor and then we have connected in, instead of giving the compensatory circuit, the, the we have given a constant reference voltage throughout the circuit. So based on the flow, the change based on the change in temperature, the, there is a change in resistance and you will see how the feedback mechanism here would again enable this resistor to maintain the constant temperature irrespective of your flow. This is the op amp which can support the high currents, the OPA 548 op amp what I was talking about. Now that we have seen how to connect and I have given a constant reference voltage of 5 volts that is this as load varies the resistance of this varies. However, it is always being compared with 5 volts so that your feedback drives current accordingly and the temperature remains constant. Now for steady state without flow, let us see what is the output voltage. Looking at the oscilloscope here, Here you can see the set voltage 5.5 the 5 volts and then here 
the voltage across your sensor that is the PT100 is showing 4.8 volts which is approx which is close to your set value. Now, now what happens when air flows through your PT100? Assume in order to simulate the air flow mechanism as air flows it takes away the heat from your resistor and so there is a drop in temperature just to simulate I have an ice pack here which I, I would just keep it on the PT100 here. Now what I want you to see is the as I keep the ice pack on your PT100 let us see the variation in the voltage levels here on my CRO. So when I cool assume there is air flowing and it is taking away the heat from your PT100 the voltage varies. So, you see the voltage is going up to 5.6 volt from so we have a reference voltage which is 5 volts. The differential voltage is rapidly increasing. So, now it is 5.48 let us say I remove the ice pack. So, it has to so this voltage difference is vast. So, based on this voltage difference there is current which is being driven to your heater so that it again comes back to the room temperature or maintains constant temperature. Now that I have removed the ice pack again as you can see it is very quickly it has come back to the normal state that is it is now having a voltage of up to 4.8 volts which was the steady state condition. Now you can do further experiments as to just to check the response time. So, the minute I get the ice pack close to the sensor it immediately detects the, the change in voltage is immediately detected in fraction of a second. So, now it has gone up to 5.8 volts. Now, the voltage difference once I removed. So, now that I have the ice pack close to the heater you see the difference in voltage. As I get it back let us see how sensitive our op-amp or the device the PT100 sensor is. So, when I have the ice pack close let us see how quickly it would rise the change in voltage can be observed from the CRO. So, now 5 volts so as, as you see the voltage is rapidly increasing. The differential voltage here tends to drive current in order to maintain your PT100 at the desired temperature. The minute I remove the ice pack you see the temperature the, the voltage variation has rapidly come down. So, now it is 4.8 which is ideally the steady state condition. Considering how quick the response is you could always choose the OPF548 which is a high power amplifier in order to get better efficiency while you are working with your circuit and have a very quick response time. So, now we have seen how a PT100 can be used in your circuit and have a closed loop feedback so that you could measure the velocity of the air which is flowing through your load irrespective of the change in load you can always have a feedback mechanism in order to keep your sensor at a constant temperature and this parameter will help you understand the velocity at which the air is flowing from King's law which was discussed in our previous lecture. So, from the equation you could derive the direct proportionality between the velocity and the change in voltage and then plot the rate at which the air would be flowing across your device. So, this was a brief explanation as to how to rig up your anemometer circuit and then check the feedback mechanism. That is it for today. Thank you.